Discover the exquisite beauty of Islam with our exclusive poster collection showcasing the 99 names of Allah. Each poster meticulously presents the Arabic name, pronunciation and English translation, embodying the essence of our Creator. Elevate your surroundings with these high-quality designs that not only serve as art, but also offer a glimpse into the profound beauty of Islamic culture. Immerse yourself in the collection and unveil the magnificence of the 99 names. Links in the description box. All right, guys, welcome back to the channel. If you're new, my name is Bobby. Guys, today we're going to check out Andrew Tate's latest interview in which he got confronted for his conversion to Islam. The interviewer asked him if it was just a PR stunt. Before we jump into the video, guys, as always, if you enjoy my content, leave me a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and check out the links in the description box below to further support. And now, with no further ado, let's have a look. You know, you're converting to Islam. Yeah. Was that kind of like a PR stunt? Absolutely not. I think that it is the last religion on earth. If you believe in God, you're a Muslim. What's a Christian? What's a, what's a Muslim? What's any other religious belief? If you do not have not... strong parameters because of your religious belief, then you're not. And Christians no longer have strong parameters. But you don't... Everyone says they're a Christian. Nobody acts like a Christian. I don't respect it anymore. And that's why I had to revert to Islam. I was raised in a Christian household. My family's actually extremely religious. I live in a very Christian nation, but I don't see Christianity. This is the most Christian nation on earth, and you do see it. If I drive into the mountains, you'll see nuns. There's nunneries. They have huge churches here. You can see it a little okay. bit in Romania. Can feel the Christian aspect to it. But in general, if you look at most Christian countries in the West, it's insane. I mean, ultimately, this Andrew Tate's opinion, so therefore, who am I to judge? Alhamdulillah, he found Islam in the end. But nevertheless, to critique it a little bit, he himself says that he lives in a Christian country and therefore is surrounded by Christians and there are monasteries, etc. So therefore, he got a flavor of the real Christianity, if you will. Therefore, why does it matter that other Christian countries do not practice Christianity? The same can be said about Islamic countries, quote unquote, as well. You have certain Muslim countries that are more practicing and they integrated the Sharia into their constitution. Other Muslim countries, not not so much. They are liberalized and secularized. So therefore, my point being is that you cannot measure the religion by its followers. What does it matter that you have practicing Christians or practicing Muslims or the lack thereof? That does not define the truth of the theology. And yet again, alhamdulillah, he found Islam in his way. That is the most important thing. But nevertheless, to simply say, well, there are so many Christians that do not practice the religion that does not discard the value of Christianity. Christianity has to be examined theologically. And if you disagree with the theology, at least you can say something about Christianity. I come from an Orthodox Christian background myself. And for me, it was first and foremost, the Trinity. The Trinity is absolutely in coherent and cannot be explained further implicit within the trinity is that jesus is god this is really what christians are supposed to believe this was not possible for me when i was looking at jesus christ i saw a prophet a messenger of god i did not see god there Moreover, Christianity claims that you can pray for intercession, you can pray to saints, you can pray to Mother Mary, etc., etc., you name it. So those are theological aspects of the doctrine that I couldn't agree with, and therefore I had to look elsewhere. Once I opened up the Quran, everything started falling into place. My point being, yet again, is we cannot attack Christianity on the basis of its followers. Even Muslims will say, Islam is perfect, Muslims are not. A man just got charged with a hate crime for removing the head of a devil statue that Satanists had put inside a church. And he took the head off it and he is being charged with a hate crime. Him, in yeah. a Christian country. And it's about Christianity. a secular well, no, country. Oh, well, there you go. Christianity has lost all of its merits as a religion. If you do not have strong parameters of what is right and what is wrong, and if you're afraid to say them, go to a Christian and say, is homosexuality allowed? Do you agree with it? And they're going to pussyfoot around the question. They're going to say, well, you people can make their own choices. God loves everyone. 
The Bible says no. The Quran says no. You're homophobe. The Quran says no. Yeah, yet again, I don't think this is a great argument. It does not matter what a Christian will say about that subject. It does not matter if they are pro or contra. Ultimately, the question is, of course, what does Christianity say about that subject? And therefore, if you talk to Orthodox Christians or you talk to priests, etc., they will, of course, tell you everything you need to know about that subject. And under God, it is, of course, sinful. Yet again, I'm a Muslim myself. I'm a revert from Orthodox Christianity to Islam. And because of that, because I am a Muslim, I of course treat people with respect and I put on my best manners here. I don't think it's the way to tell them, oh, well, you're pussyfooting around the question. Yes, some people do, and they are not the true believers. So therefore, if I want to find out about Christianity, I talk to the real believers, I talk to the priests, I talk to the monks. I even went so far to go to the monasteries in Greece on Mount Athos and speak to those people, examine the beliefs, talk about subjects such as the Trinity, and then draw my own conclusions. But yet again, it really does not matter that you have some weak, quote-unquote, believers. It really does not matter what they believe. What is important is to understand what the doctrine teaches. Ultimately, faith is between you and God. If Christianity was supposed to be the truth and all its followers were weak, it would not matter because you would be upon the truth in front of your God. And I treat Islam the same way because guess what? I met many, many Muslims in my life that were absolute degenerates. It was not so that I could say, well, everybody that was Muslim was just perfectly sin-free. Quite the opposite, man. I grew up in Germany and most criminals, most drug addicts even, unfortunately, were quote-unquote Muslims. But ultimately, I didn't measure the religion by that standard. I did my own research and realized my relationship to God is the most important thing for me because I have to ensure that I will make it into paradise, ultimately, that my soul will be saved. So what do I have to do in front of my Lord? For me, it was crystal clear that I have to submit my will to God alone, cut out the middleman, so to speak, cut out everybody else and follow the true religion, which is the submission to God, i.e. Islam. Done. I'm not going to be part of a religion or adhere to a religion that doesn't have strict beliefs, because then it's not a religion anymore. If you tolerate everything, you stand for nothing. Out of it. Okay. So there's only Islam left. Now, I'm not going to insult Christians. I believe that there's one God. This theory of mine might give me trouble with Muslims alone. Uh, Muslims also. I don't know if this, this is just how I view it. I believe there's one God and I believe the different religions are perhaps different languages to say the same thing. You can say coffee cup in German, you can say coffee cup in English, but it's still a coffee cup. There are different ways to say the same thing. Perennialism. But, the, but Islam is so much stricter it's so much more respectable. You can feel it. So what Andrew Tate talks about there is basically perennialism. Perennialism teaches that you have many ways to God. Different languages, as he said, different paths, different ways, but they all lead back to the same God. So now, Islamically speaking, we cannot point out an individual and say, this guy goes straight to hell 100%. No, ultimately, it is in the mercy of God. But theologically speaking, if we look at religions, you cannot say that they all lead to God. Why? Because they're mutually exclusive. Think about it logically. If we talk about Christianity, for example, Christians believe that Jesus is God. That's a fact. That's what they believe. Muslims, on the other hand, would see this as shirk, absolute blasphemy, of course. A man cannot be God within Islam. And therefore, if Christianity is true, Islam cannot be true. If Islam is true, then Christianity cannot be true. Moreover, Islam claims that Jesus is the Messiah. The same applies for Christianity. However, within Judaism, this is not the case. Within Judaism, Jesus is nobody at best or a charlatan at worst. And then you dive further into the religions and you see Hinduism, for example, worshipping many deities, many so-called gods. Or Buddhism, then, the lack thereof. There is no god within Buddhism. 
And therefore, yet again, if Islam is true and there is only one God, then Buddhism cannot be true because there is no God within Buddhism. So therefore, at least on a doctrinal, theological surface level, those religions are mutually exclusive. They cannot be all equally true. So if you truly believe in God, I don't see how you could not want to be a Muslim. I agree. I don't see how you can feel any pride in being a Christian anymore. And it's that's not why about I pride, it. really. Not because I'd always believed in God, but I just found the language that made the most sense to me. And I don't see any other language that makes sense anymore. I feel like it's a very easy choice for anyone who truly believes in God. All right, that's so this is it for today's video. He said in the end that ultimately this is the only language that makes sense for him. He does not understand how you can believe in God and not want to be a Muslim. With that statement, I absolutely agree. Because yet again, theologically, if we look at the religions, we see first and foremost Christianity because this is where he came from. Christianity worships three in one. No, it's not three gods. It's three persons of God. Ultimately, God is a male figure. He is the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. So he's not ultimately transcendent of gender even. He is very human. And therefore, atheists, rightfully so, attack Christianity for believing in a sky daddy. Is this truly God? I absolutely disagree with this concept and I cannot adapt it no matter what. Therefore, you look further into Judaism and you see somewhat of a monotheistic religion, of course, but at the same time, it is ethnocentric. It is for the Jews. It does not speak of the God of the universe, but it speaks of the God of the children of Israel. So this is very ethnocentric, and this is not the God that I worship. How could God create all kinds of people, all kinds of races, but then he is exclusive and has his own children within Israel? This is absolutely irrational. It does not make sense. And therefore, yet again, you look at Islam. Islam is the submission to God's will, the worship of one God alone without attaching any partners to him. This makes perfect sense. And therefore, yes, he's absolutely right here. If you believe in God, why wouldn't you want to be a Muslim? With the other points of his talk, as I said already, I personally disagree. It's his own opinion, so therefore it does not matter anyways. He can hold his belief, I can hold mine. But that being said, I really don't see how you can measure the success or the validity or the truth of the religion by its followers. Because when I became a Muslim, I didn't want to join a new team. And this is why to this very day, I do not care about sectarianism. I do not care about the Sunni and Shia divide. You probably are Shia, isn't it? I am a Muslim and this is what counts for me in front of my creator. I did not choose a new team, a secret club or society that I wanted to join and those guys are so powerful. I do not care for that. I'm very happy by myself. It was only about the relationship of myself to my creator. This is really what counts ultimately because you're born alone and you die alone. Ultimately, this is an appeal to majority or an appeal to might makes right. Just because the majority holds a stronger belief and they really believe in it, it doesn't make it true, man. Just look back into the few past years and what has happened. There was a very, very vocal group and the mainstream as well held a very strong position in proclaiming what is right and what is wrong. But in this instance, Andrew, thank God, did not follow the herd. He was somewhat of a contrarian speaking out about that subject. Did you have the vaccine? Absolutely and utterly not, sir. My principles are not for sale. I would have stayed in my house to the end of human time and sat there as a pure blood, the last one, the last pure blood Andrew. on the planet before Andrew. I inject myself with poison. You can never follow a group of people or the majority opinion. Surely you will be led astray. However, this is why as Muslims, we have the Quran, we have the Sunnah, we have the revelation that we can rely upon. It is revealed to us people. It is personal, if you will. You can always read it by yourself and pray for guidance of God alone. The promise within the Quran is, call upon me, I will respond to you. This is God's promise. If you call upon God, he will respond to you. And this is how I want to end this video ultimately. Christian, Jew, Hindu, or whatnot, simply pray to God alone, ask him for guidance, ask him to reveal the truth to you, 
and he surely will. All right, guys, but this is it for today's video. If you liked it, leave the thumbs up, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Check out the links in the description box below to further support my work. And as always, may God bless you all. Much love and peace.